What do you think? I, I, I was really um, so interested and very motivated by so many of the comments. Um, really a lot of very thought-provoking uh, ideas, no, no lack of things to work on, <laughs> for sure. I kind of like this idea of, of the ICT and, and the, the fiber optics in the river and, and then the marketing of products from, from uh, way inside. I thought, is that the Amazon.com coming into the Amazon or something? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that um, a lot of the ideas, well, I really saw um, several of the speakers touch on the importance of the, the local to regional um, issues, and in particular, uh, some of these ideas of, of empowering the, the forest people and the value chains um, that I, I think are, are critical to the success of a lot of these in, in, um, in, interventions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to pick up on this thing of fragmentation. I think it came from several of you, but uh, I think Dan particularly brought it up towards the end. And, and I, I picked up a number of other things that I would like to connect to this fragmentation issue, fragmentation of agendas, as I also said in my opening. Why don't the forest declaration and the agriculture de declaration fit together? Uh, and then three things I picked up from the discussion today was that first the need of a common language. and, and uh, common language of what we mean by success and that needs to be a common language that not only uh, teenagers and politicians understand but even economists understand that that's that's the trick and and uh, i think we can get there and and i think that will that will help us pull in more finance to to the actions the second one is that we need to have the courage to bridge the agendas these fragmented agendas um, and I think as researchers, we can have that courage, provided that those that fund us have the same courage. So, so this is the research agenda coming up, and we have the courage. Do the donors have the courage? We'll see. And the third thing is that I think in this bridging the agenda, a key is really to embrace the diversity of solutions. It's very easy if in, in to, to argue for well, actually, deforestation is a case. It's a one similar solution everywhere. And it's, it's a good one. I agree to that. But we have to embrace the diversity of solutions. Are we truly going for a bottom-up approach? Then we will have to accept that the solutions look different in different places. And I think that would be another trick to convince the policymakers and, and the uh, heads of state, etc. So those were three things I picked up on the fragmentation issue. Okay, I, th I think that actually sets up very nicely some of the, the final remarks that I wanted to make. And in respect uh, to, I think, some of the research opportunities that uh, definitely exist uh, between the Earth Institute and C4, for example, and I'm going to pick, uh, there are so many, but I'm going to pick the, the particular comments that were made by um, both Cheryl and Dan that I think are related. Um, so Cheryl advocates that we really need, you know, better planning tools and decision tools so that agriculture can benefit the forests. Um, and in Dan's words, uh, the need for bottom-up, regionally attuned solution to address uh, a lot of these problems. I think those things are related, and I think that they also go to, again, this, this issue of working at a, a local to, to regional level. And in the interest of uh, research and, and collaborative research, um, so starting with the research piece itself, uh, the data is, is certainly critical, and, and we heard a lot about that. Um, having the data, having access to the data, but the data is only part of it. We need to turn that into knowledge, and all of our little research communities has their own data and their own knowledge, so we need to bring that all together, the, the agro agronomic, the climate, the social, the economic, um, remote sensing, all of these things need to come together by working together. And so I think that there's a lot of research in just how those communities work together, how we put our information together that actually becomes then knowledge and something that can start to build and inform decision systems and planning tools and things like that. But in order to do that, then the second critical piece, I think, and, and many of you touched on this also, is partnerships. So we have this research partnership for the future up here. And it is more than just Earth Institute and C4. It's really the partnership with those local communities and with the national agencies and um, with really the global community that wants to succeed in this problem. So that's uh, what, what I sort of distilled out of all of this great um, dialogue from, from you distinguished speakers. Thank you.
Yeah, I just have one short thing to add, and that's that in the past couple of days we've heard from very high levels a lot of talk about taking the forests out of the value chain. And I'm beginning to think that that's actually completely wrong. What we want to do is the absolute opposite. That is, we want to include the value of forests and the forest in, into the value chain. And I think that there is a, an interesting twist there that we should, should be working on a bit. So I'd like also to thank you. Thanks to all speakers. Thank you to the audience who, who have uh, also provided questions to, to the panel. And, and I think we, for my part, from CFOR's part, thanks again to Colombia. Thanks to everyone who have made this possible. And I think we're ready for some refreshments outside eventually. Yes, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, C4, um, the Earth Institute. And again, thank you very much to the speakers. Thank you. Thank you.